Hi, scroll mates. So I'm doing my November wrap up. I am not gonna lie, I didn't read all of my books. <laughs> There's a few that I didn't get a chance. I don't know, I just was reaching for the stars to get those books done, I guess. First book was Verity by Colleen Hoover. I'm gonna insert a clip here. The ending, honestly, I can't, like I can't wrap my head around it. It's like choose your own ending, feels like. So, spoiler alert, click off if you don't wanna be spoiled, if you wanna read it. So Lowen is the person that's publishing her like books and stuff. So she is and then um, in the house a lot. And then Verity and Jeremy are married. So the ending goes like this. Laureen sees Verity move on the camera and tells Jeremy. Jeremy runs to confront Verity and as Lawin, my names are so confusing in this book, comes in and Verity moves and responds. It turns out that Verity has been faking her injuries and Jeremy in a fit of rage kills Verity with Lowry's approval. Lowry later finds a letter in the room from Verity addressing to Jeremy explaining that the whole autobiography was just a writing ex exercise. Exercise. Yeah, I don't know about that. Not to be taken seriously. It then proceeds to write, write how Jer Jeremy found out about the autobiography and attempts to kill her. So then writes how he he as in Jeremy, not not success, but she faked her injuries, so she beamed Verity injuries in order to get him to him a reason to try again. Her plan was then to run away with her son. So they had two kids, and they're uh, Chaz and Harper, and Harper they think that killed Harper. They think they killed like that Verity killed Harper, and that's what. Uh, Lowry found in the unpublished trans, uh, manuscript. So, and then she, that, that's how they're like confronting her. And then she like, and then Jeremy kills her, her and then she's like, what, what? Of course, both stories cannot be true. So the question is, was Verity innocent victim of misunderstanding or was she a psychological liar? She apparently been from the outside, most likely a psychological liar. So what is your conclusion to this story? If you've read it, do you think that she actually faked her injuries or she actually had injuries. She killed her daughter, Harper, because Harper in the, her manuscript, she said that she killed Chaz. She killed her other sibling. So she wrote about that in her manuscript. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> and yeah, so then also the summary of the book itself is Laris Ash Ashley is a struggling writer on the brink of financial ruin when she accepts the job offer of a, a lifetime. Jeremy Crawford, husband of a best-selling author, Verity Crawford. So Verity Crawford is like a made-up fictional best-selling author. Has hired Lowry to complete the remaining books and the successful series his injured wife is unable to finish. I think it's the ending where she's faking injuries and also I feel like she did really, like why would you write unfinished manuscript? that you killed one of your daughters, Harper. And then the craziest thing is that Lowry and Jeremy then get together and have their own kid. I just wanted to figure out why he didn't publish the, this manuscript. There was very explicit scenes of like sexual, you know, I didn't like, as for a Christian myself, I did not like that aspect. So I just like skipped ahead those parts. So I don't know. You guys let me know down below what you think what your own conclusion. The next book is Romanov. And I actually, I know this is a very hype book. I really enjoyed this book. And the reasons why, it's such amazing retelling of Anastasia would have unconditional love for me like that. So I know my family would, but I'm just saying in general, it was really nice to see in a book. Next book I had is Uninvited. I do love a good Christian book, but going through a hard time, but also with like trying to figure out like how God could help them. It's like she did go through that, but just a lot of what was me. So. I don't know, I gave it like a two star also, Romanoff I gave uh, like a four. So my next book is Compassion and Suffering and I enjoyed this one a lot better. It had more tangible and like gripping things that I could apply to my life that are Christian based. So I suggest reading this book 
and I forgot to mention that we had 80s day at work so don't mind my necklaces and hair and all that things because very bright back in that decade you know for school teacher you know you just gotta do they go into it's a yellow fever in the one part of this book it was really sad her grandpa was passing away and there's just this scene where she's just holding her grandpa's hand and just so sad about like because he's dying from yellow flu and just like their interaction in this scene is just so heart-wrenching and sad very a lot of depth in writing so I really like that. The Mighty Miss Malone was set in the Great Depression last couple weeks that have been doing a lot with um, sticking together as a family and having passion on each other and fighting for our loved ones or their loved ones. I really liked how she had in the epilogue or how Christopher had in the epilogue. Well he calls it the afterword. Afterward? How he talks about all of the history that after, so let's just read this a little bit. It says, after writing that last sentence, I can't, I can't help feeling this. And the fact that in late 2011, I can write that there are 15 million poor children in this country is, quote, the mighty Miss Malone tragedy. Uh, it did talk about race a lot, different racial ethnicities. The one character, I think it was the teacher, she's like, wow, oh, you're doing so great for your, for your kind. And just like, so degrading, it made me cringe. I wanted to like, I wish I could go in the pit. The book. I was like, are you kidding? <sighs> so naive. It is supposed to be set in during the Great Depression. I can give you give you three. <laughs> so next one is Maltus Falcon. So I found I don't really like mass paperbacks, but I did find that this one because I wanted to read I want to read more classics, that this one was very good. So I actually did listen to partly audio, partly you wanna hear kind of like an audio drama narrative it's very very good and fast paced and i really enjoyed that there was like multiple narrations of the different people so you know who was speaking i learned a little bit of slang and from 1929 because that's when it was said so i learned the word dynamite her it's like oh she's really good looking so that's what that so i thought that was kind of funny <laughs> i don't know i mean it's not most appropriate thing ever. The woman in white, I actually didn't, I read about a chapter. Not gonna lie, it's because I didn't get to it. So I think I'm going to just jump, have a jump over into December. So another book I didn't have a chance to read was One of Us is Lying, and I really want to get engrossed in this book because I'm really enjoying Karen M. McMahon's writing so much. Like I really enjoyed, I've read about four of her books and her plot twists and you have to really think and like be a detective. Apparently people have said it's similar to Real Liars, the vibes. So the last book is The Cousins by Karen M. McManon and boy, this makes me go flip flop and turn. Okay, so this book was about, is about a family. They have the parents and then they have the second generation and the side is always, just all A's. So any of the A names you see, that's like their kids. And then they're married to those those people and then all of their kids so it's their generation i just thought it in that terms because it got so confusing so mildred and abraham are wealthy and they have four kids archie anders uh allison adam when they were younger they got like disowned and they got literally shipped away and they're like yeah we're not having you anymore and then their their kids like the four siblings had kids except for Archie, for reasons why I cannot say, because it's spoiler. And they try to figure out why their family has a secret or disowned from their family's inheritance. So the last book, oh boy, we're gonna be here for a while. People that have read this book, my goodness, literally my goodness. I was taking notes, trying to figure out who killed who. Family tree, I had to keep flipping back and forth. I was so confused. I actually, I have an insert video here, but I didn't know there was a family tree. Literally until page, I don't even know what. Got, I'm reading Cousins and I've gotten to page 250 and then I'm like, ugh, the family tree, I'm like, I'm so confused. I'm trying to figure it out and writing it out and stuff. And then I go back to the beginning of the book. And it's on the very first page. It's so I'm gonna save myself so much time and then it goes into chapter one but i didn't even see this page oh my goodness and then the other thing is that so when they were driving by in the little town in aubrey's dad's book he wrote about cut like cut beach so he just like shortened for he short formed like a bunch of things but they're all true and then this is like i thought this was like a foreshadowing thing because she's like not only because it added to the weird dad cutty beach connection that's being formed in my brain, Jonah and Millie. And she's like, wow, like, why am I so attracted to my cousin? And like, whatever. And then 
They're at this like lunch thing. He's eating or seafood and he's like shoveling it in. He's like, just like angry eating or whatever. Cause he's, he's, he's talking, she's talking to another guy or whatever. And then he's like, can we move away from the trash cans? Um, what the heck indeed. And then she said, what the heck indeed. Give me it back, give me back my stuff. And then she's like, he's like, oh crap, oh crap. You, just as soon as you tell me who the heck you are, Jonas North. <laughs> so it is not Jonas story. Cause that's like, that's the family, the stories. Like the whole family is last name story. So that was, that was really funny. But then Millie and Aubrey keep it a secret because they need help with finding out this discovery of the actual, why is their parents generation cut off from their inheritance? and also Jonah, the real Jonah, wanted to go to science camp. So the other thing is that Anders and Guy Matt were both were date this one girl, Kayla, and then would break up with her. And then they were kind of like dating back and forth each other, as in like she would date Matt for a little bit and then she'd date Anders. Matt had a one night stand with Allison. So the reason why I'm bringing this up is because literally it's like why the story is the story. The last call that Dr. Baxter made before he died was to Donald and I was like, ooh, he's sus. Let's put a question mark around him. I definitely thought at this point it was Donald that killed him. And I was right. <laughs> okay, this is my favorite part of the whole book. Okay, so Millie and Aubrey and Jonah, Jonah North, not Story, North, all know that Jonah North is not Jonah Story. So Millie and him start, you know, hanging out, whatever. And Millie kind of had a feeling that they were more than friends. So they were at this like family gala that they have every year with the whole family. And they went to go step outside and Millie was a little too little tipsy and they start making out. I turned to see Donald gasping at us, a red faced Aubrey by his side. The, cause Maris for her because they, she knows it. like she just wants to protect them, but she can't at this point because they're across the road. The carton we slit sit behind has been pulled back. The French door leaning to the balcony is open and everyone, every single person <laughs> behind Donald. And there was a lot of people there is staring at us, including my grandmother. That'd be fun. The next chapter. So this is, that was Millie's chapter. Now Aubrey, Aubrey's like, I've never seen a train wreck in real life, but I finally understand the metaphor. Looking at Millie and Jonah, Jonah is un unbearable, but I cannot look away either. It's like a live car. It's like a, li a live car crash. <laughs> like, oh my God, how embarrassing would that be? And then Aubrey goes, should I tell them that they're actually not cousins or should I not? Like, what should I do at this point? Like, how do I explain it? <laughs> Grandma Mildred, why would she react in this way when talking about Kayla's death? So she said, so I highlighted this. So she said, is there, well, uh, Aubrey said this because she was in her good books uh, out of all the grandkids in Mildred's eyes. Is there something about, something unusual about Kayla's death? I wish Millie were here, the granddaughter, to see the expression in on Grand's face. She stared at me in utter shock, putting her cup down so swiftly that the tea sloshed onto, the, onto her gloves. How do you, dot, 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 she breath, breathes. She makes a visible, mighty effort to compose herself. But what on earth are you talking about? And then she goes in and then uh, Aubrey spilled tea on her and she had to remove her gloves. And then she noticed there was no, cause she knew that her grandma and her shared a wine stain mark on their, on their, on their hand. And she noticed that every single time she saw her, she wore gloves and she thought it was just like a proper thing, a lady thing, whatever. And then she had took those off because it was hot tea and she didn't see the wine stains and she was like, she's not who she says she is. And she found, figured that out later in the book. And Matt had the party and Adam and Anders were talk, talking about earlier in the book that they wanted to plot revenge to hurt Matt. So I didn't know that they wanted to kill him necessarily, but like hurt him in some way. So Anders said to Matt, and he was already a little intoxicated during this party, that you need to go save Kayla because she's swimming out in the ocean and it was very like high winds. He was like, oh, for sure, whatever. He went and Adam let him go, whatever that means. I don't even know what Mildred ever meant by that, but he let him go and that's Aubrey's dad. He, in her mind, Teresa's mind, it was Adam's fault, even though Anders lured him. So it's really both their faults. So I don't know why she holds a heavier blame on Adam, but whatever. 
in her mind, it's all Adam's fault. So this is why he, she wants to take away his one daughter, which is Aubrey. So confusing with all these people's names for this life, <laughs> all the A names. So, and then it goes into your snake of a brother, Anders, told him that Kayla had been swept away by the tide that Anne needed help. No, and uh, Anders was perfectly aware of that he lied to Matt in the water. He knew he's he'd probably never come out and Adam was standing right next to him, them, and he let him go. Adam just let him go. How could you possibly know that? Kayla, Anders, got drunk one night and spilled everything to her. I don't think he re even remembered doing that it she told me jealousy was matt and resenting him even more when matt got allison pregnant the summer he died kayla told told you all this and then it goes into she and i had been alone in the house i called donald because well we called donald for everything back then donald was a counselor remember he said something about how your ch children would burn through abraham and Mildred's fortune in no time flat and I got an idea so the children you know the second generation but Donald loved it he'd always l wanted to get his hands on your parents money we looped in Fred Baxter which is the doctor who was dr drowning in debt and promised to make all that go away if he kept acting as my physician with burning we burned Mildred here on the ground of the house and I, and I brought my sister Paula, which is Teresa, which is actually not Teresa, <laughs> here to take my place. Then Donald, and Donald, well, he thought it would be, would become a problem if she knew, if she talked, Kayla. If people knew I had a reason to hate the story children, so he, he took matters into his own hands. So he killed Kayla because if the story children, if they, if, Teresa had a reason to not like Adam or Anders. It would look bad on her part to to all of a sudden have her fortune, Mildred's fortune, when she hates them. Makes sense. It, so the next, the next man of the next kill, how how Doctor Baxter died, which was no shock. <laughs> Is that what happened to Fred, Doctor Baxter too? He started talking his this summer trying to piece together to a confu confusion in that added brain of his. So Donald took matters into his own hands, drowned the man in his own backyard. I would have done anything for that boy, Adam. This is a uh, Teresa talking. And then when he had the chance to keep my son, Matt, safe, he didn't take it. All Adam had to do was say stop either to Anders or to Matt. They have listened to him and Matt would still be alive. What else am I supposed to do with Adam's daughter? Uncle Archie then finds Aubrey and Teresa in the, yeah, the living room and says, shoot me instead. And so in the end they don't die and then they go flash forward to six months, five months or whatever and like this taught me that greed is very much a uh, power play in people's lives and that God does not want me to be like that, which I already knew. But I mean, this is just very evident how much greed can like get people and just how many secrets people can undergo and cover up and do things that they might, they, they wouldn't normally do just for the, the sake of an end. It, they, it happens that the generation or generation second generation any of them don't get any of the money because Teresa Paula Dr. Baxter and Donald all spend it all during the last 23 years so the 24th year they actually didn't pay a single penny in like the mortgage the the utility bills any of the bills for the actual house, house itself so it was actually had to be paid into so and then at, at the end it was really creepy because at the end of the book they found everyone like or not Mildred but, uh, Teresa, Donald, but Baxter was dead. And then there's Paula. So Paula, at the end, she sends a uh, text message to Jonah North and says, so he, she sends a message and says, from one imposter to another, I'd like to give you some words of advice. Keep your parents 
far away from Anders' story's new venture. I have a strong suspicion that it will one day, as they say, go up in flames. So also, the house was caught on flames, as in when they were having this whole altercation with the, like the pistol and stuff, because Paula set the house on fire because Teresa told her to, in a way, like a secret way. Okay, so Anders' story and his family live in Providence. The story scandal was pretty out there. Anders is starting a new company, which I know nothing about other than he, what he started, shared with the Providence Journal last week. Everything I've learned, everything I stand for, and everything I have will be poured into this new venture. Teresa, sister Paula, is still at large. So, I don't know what they're talking about. They're like alluding to something when they're talking about in the last sentence where they said, and it's signed, family first key, which is Paula. And I'm like, eh. I wish there was a sequel, but there's no one. That's all the books I have. That took me forever to finish that one. Sorry, I just got really in depth in that book, man. Ooh. This is going to be late. I am sorry, my reading wrap up is going to be late because I'm filming it November 30th, but it will not be edited until later date because I don't do YouTube full time. I work and do school, so I don't really necessarily have all the time to do that. So I'm also going to film my December TBR and I'm going to do as the style of Hey Reader by Chantal that reads all day. So I'm excited about that and look forward to that. So I'll join you.